for the first five or six years of Johnson Banks, my company, uh, we really did, as most small companies do, we really did anything that we could get, <laughs> any project we could, and it happened to be quite corporate, quite big organisations, and we were really drawn to these educational and cultural projects that, that you really felt like you were doing some good. In certain, certain markets around the world, especially say in the UK, which is a very competitive market, um, it's absolutely uh, paramount that a brand uh, stands out and it's really clear about what it stands for. So we spend a lot of our time searching for clarity, verbal clarity, and then we'll look for visual power. The work that we did for Acumen in New York uh, started when they approached us because they felt that their, um, the way that they were presenting themselves across the world wasn't consistent or interesting enough. And Acumen, they're a, a thought leader in impact investment. And I felt, and they felt, that they should look as good as they really were. And they were doing the most amazing work, still are doing the most amazing work in India, Pakistan, Western East Africa, where they take and find um, amazing innovations and support them uh, on the ground. They don't have the ideas in New York and throw grain out of an aeroplane. They find people with a great idea to uh, reuse corn husks or an irrigation idea, and they, they put philanthropic money in, but on the ground. So they, they're like an ethical investor, okay? So when we started the work, uh, we re just really wanted to find a way for this um, ambition that Acumen have uh, to be the, the greatest impact investor in the world, to really come across in the work. So we created a manifesto with, together of all the work that they do, and then we found a way to bring that across in their visual identity. So the words, 148-word uh, manifesto, starts to trickle through into all the identities and all the symbols that they can use. And then they have a complete visual toolkit that goes with it. We were approached by UNICEF in the UK um, about a year and a half ago, two years ago. And UNICEF in the UK are not as understood as they are in some countries around the world. So in, Uni in the UK, only 38% of people realise that UNICEF are a children's organisation. So we spent a lot of time uh, talking to them about how we would make it clearer that they were about children and why, uh, why what were they doing for children. So why, we, why are we here, we kept asking them. And we managed to get them to agree in the end that we would put near the UNICEF logo, we would put five words for every child in danger. So if anyone said, why are you here? They would say, we're here for every child. So they're global. And it, their child was clearly in the phrase so that you couldn't think that they were uh, you know, a refugee agency or a malaria organization. And in danger is very useful because then you can sort of say, these children are in danger, we need your help. But they can also say, we can, we can supply safety to these children, will you help us? And so once we found that verbal basis, we then did a huge um, design phase where we uh, re-engineered the way that they communicated and get, gave them a much more powerful um, uh, design style based on what they have, but evolving it into a really uh, powerful toolkit. The charities and NGOs have to be they have to take some proper decisions. They have to be really clear about what they do. And they have to be quite brave. Because in some cases, if they're not brave and they don't stand out, they, they will fail. Yeah, they will um, not be there anymore. So there's some really interesting and really inno innovative work being done in this sector. Now, I think that the corporations uh, will have to start looking at this soon because they're starting to look pretty uh, fusty, pretty old fashioned, some of them. And they'll be looking at some of this work that's happening in this growing and burgeoning sector and thinking we want some of that. Now at the moment that tends to be just uh, projects that in the UK we'd call greenwash or corporate and social responsibility projects which are really an excuse for doing some good. But I think I'm hopeful that more and more organisations will start to become uh, much have a much better approach to the world and, and really start to be, believe in design for good for themselves. And maybe they'll start to do things like realise that profit is not everything you know, the happiness of their staff and everyone being healthy and happy and, and a kind of a better place to work and a better world, people will start to put these higher than just the money they make at the end of the day.